name is Miss Randy, and I just want to take a moment to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us for our middle school experience. If this is your very first time joining us, take a moment to say hi. We want the opportunity to connect with you. So down below, there's a link. Just click on it, fill it out, and someone from our middle school team will call and just to say what's up. Now, y'all. It's time for my favorite part of service, and that is where we get to worship. Today, I just want to challenge you to take a moment to worship as though you are in the house of God, worshiping and praising with your friends and your church family. Let's pray together and then let's worship together. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today and the opportunity to still worship and praise and connect even in this time of social distancing. And so today we just wanna take a moment to thank you for all of the things, big and small, that you have done in our lives. Those things that we know about and those that we don't because you're pretty awesome. And we just thank you for your grace and the way that you continue to just love us. And so right now, we just wanna say thank you and that we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The B-I-B-L-E Yes, that's the book for me. I read it every day of my life. So I know how to choose what's wrong or right. Stand on it. Give me no limit. What tuck it? Stand on it. Give me no limit. What tuck it? enjoyed that worship just as much as I did. Now, before we hop into today's message, I have just a few announcements that I want to share with you. Now, number one, the one I'm most excited about is we are now meeting face-to-face on campus in person for our weekend services. Now, if you have not had a chance to do so yet, Go ahead, ask your parents if they want to come out. We are socially distancing. We are actually doing medical screening, so it is super safe. But you can register to come and attend with us for a live in-person service where we can air high five and worship together. Now, 
It has been super, super great to see all the students that have come. So if you've come, thank you so much, y'all. It's been really great. And if you haven't come, we hope to have the opportunity to see you soon. And once again, you can just navigate over to visit cc.com and sign up to come. Now, the second thing that I want to share with you is our midweek services, y'all. We have kicked off a midweek experience for students where we can have real conversations about real topics that um, really relate to what you're experiencing in life. And there are a few ways that you can participate. The easiest way to participate is to log on to YouTube Live on the One Community Church page and just join in the conversation. We've had some great conversations so far. We've talked about decision making. We've kind of talked about modesty and what's okay to wear and what's not okay to wear because we have seen some things that are just not okay to wear. But we want to hear from you what suggestions do you have? What topics do you want to discuss? You can drop them in a the chat or you can just shoot them over to us. Email them or text them to your small group leader. But additionally, we need students like you to help us keep creating great experiences. So if you want to volunteer, if your parents are okay with you coming out and joining us, we have some great opportunities for you to start to get plugged back into the student ministry. We also wanna make sure that each and every one of you are connected and you can do both those things. You can volunteer and get connected to a small group by kick, clicking on the link below. So click on that link, sign up to join us or sign up to join a group and we hope to have the opportunity to see you soon. Now, if you could, wherever you are, put some fire emojis and some hand claps in the chat down below as we get ready to hear a great word from Pastor Aaron. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Aaron, and welcome to our message time. I'm super excited that you guys are locked in and ready to learn more about God. But uh, I have to start with this, man. If you guys know who I am, and if you know me, uh, some of you don't know me, but I'm going to share with you, I love basketball. If you know anything about me, you know that I love basketball. I mean, die hard. I can watch it. I can play it. All of the above. And Growing up, my favorite, and I have a lot of like greatest players on my list, and but obviously the greatest of all time, the number one person that's on my list is, you guessed it, it's not LeBron James, it's Michael Jordan. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of debate between who's the greatest, LeBron or Mike, and we can save that debate for another time, but I grew up watching Michael Jordan. And it was so inspiring watching Michael Jordan, just the way that he played. I mean, this dribble moves, the way that he hung in the air for a dunk, the way that he hit that fadeaway jump shot at the end of the game. Three, two, one. Oh, Michael Jordan does it again. Like I lived for that moment. And I remember literally watching the game and then going outside to literally be like Mike. That's all I wanted to do is be like Mike. There's even a famous commercial that literally talks about everybody trying to be like Mike. You should YouTube it. It probably has like a million views or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but I remember going outside and trying to do the same dribble moves as Michael Jordan and trying to do the same jump shots as Michael Jordan. And well, I never really got to like the dunking part, but <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but what I found out is that like nobody can really just wake up and go outside and like be like Michael Jordan, uh, I had to break it down and I had to step by step learn how to dribble first before I could even dribble like Michael Jordan. And I had to learn how to shoot before I could even shoot like Michael Jordan. And so I remember my dad, my older brother, literally helping me learn how to dribble. And they would teach me how to dribble with my right hand and I would get that good. And then I would have to learn how to dribble with my left hand and then that would get good. And then I would go and shoot the shots and there, when you shoot the shot, you have to have your hands a certain way. You have to have your body a certain way, your feet a certain way. You have to look at the rim. And then when you let it go, you got to follow through, right? It has to be picture perfect. And step by step, I literally learned how to play the game of basketball like Mike. Uh, watching the videos, keeping up with all the stats. And I want it to be like Mike. And maybe you know what it's like as well to have a huge concept, something that's super difficult to get and to get down really good, 
but you had to break it down step by step. Maybe it's a math problem for you. And I know there are people who actually like math class and there's a big equation. And it's like, how do I even get to the solution of this? But you understand that you have to break it down step by step, one number at a time, one equation at a time to get to the final answer, right? Or maybe for you, you've learned how to play the piano. And when you listen to an amazing song, you're like, oh my gosh, that is such a cool song. But you know, you don't learn how to play the full song on your first lesson. What happens is that the teacher breaks it down step by step, and you have to learn note by note, chord by chord, line by line. And that's kind of what we're talking about this month. Because what we understand is that the Bible is a huge concept. And sometimes in order to truly understand it, you have to break it down step by step. And so all this month, we're learning about how to break down the Bible. But, but here's the truth. The truth of the matter is that, and maybe you feel this way, is that the Bible is so huge and it's such a huge concept that it's hard to understand. And, and, it's, and it's, you want to understand it, you want to try to do your best, but it's super hard. And when something is hard to understand, it can become confusing. And when something is confusing, you really don't try as hard to read it anymore. And you don't try as hard to get to know it anymore. And that's what we're talking about. Um, it's a big concept and it's hard to understand and it's confusing. And when something is confusing, you start to have a lot of questions and you start to ask questions about the Bible and you start to ask questions about God. And, and you ask things like, am I supposed to really read the Bible? How am I really supposed to read the Bible? I mean, there's so many books of the Bible. Or you may ask a question, how do I, where do I even start? I want to read the Bible, but where do I start? Do I start in Genesis? Do I start in Revelation? And who even reads Revelations, right? <laughs> do I just open up my Bible in the middle and just start reading? Like, where do I start? It's such a huge book and books inside of books and all of these different authors. Where, where, do I, where do I start? Or maybe you ask a deeper question than that. You say, is the Bible even real? Can I even trust the things that are written inside of this Bible? There's so many people that try to prove otherwise. So should I even trust what's in there? Or you say, um, I want to read my Bible. And the times that I do read my Bible, why don't I feel any more close to God when I read my Bible than when I don't read my Bible? And, and, and here's the thing. If you have questions about God and if you have questions about the Bible, the first thing I want you to know is that you're not alone. <laughs> there are moments that I have questions about the Bible, and there are moments where a lot of other people have questions about, about the Bible. And the second thing that I want you to know is that it's perfectly okay. And I want you to feel safe to ask those questions when you're with us, whether you write your questions in the comment section or whether you have these questions in small group or when you're talking to one of your leaders. Uh, I want you to know that this is a safe place for you to ask whatever question you have about something that you don't understand about the Bible. Uh, but, but here's the goal. The goal is that when we break it down, when we break the Bible down, what's surprising is that we might find the answers to some of the questions that we have. When, when, when you break it down step by step, you might be able to discover and find out a lot of the answers that you have about the Bible. There's a, a person who is the disciple of Jesus. His name is John. And there are a few other disciples who wrote about the story of Jesus. But John writes about the story of Jesus. And he doesn't just tell what happened with Jesus. He doesn't just tell how Jesus came to earth. But John goes into step-by-step -step detail and talks about why Jesus came to earth. Uh, I want to pick it up in John chapter 1. And literally verse one, this is what it says. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Now that's a pretty heavy concept to try to understand. But if you go down to verse 14, here's what it says about that word. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, which literally means Jesus, which came to earth, is the literal representation. He is, Jesus is God's word in human form. 
And, and every time we read the Bible, every time we read the stories, and every time we see an illustration, and every verse that we read in the Bible points back to Jesus. It helps us understand who Jesus is. And, and, and the point of the entire Bible is to get to know God better. It's not about becoming more intelligent. It's not about getting information so that you can have a debate with somebody else about the Bible, but, but it's about getting to know God better. Just like when I wanted to get better at playing basketball, I had to watch like film and what got me fired up and was watching film of Michael Jordan and other great players. And I would study their moves and I would study their habits and it helped me understand that person and that player a little bit better. I've tried to learn piano a few times, and um, but but it helped me understand it, how people really learn how to play piano when you break it down step by step, or even how you have a relationship with your friends, right? And if you want to have a great relationship with your BFF and with your friends, you can't just automatically assume that you're going to have a great relationship, but you have to put in a little bit of work. And so you send a text message, you see how they're doing, you check up on them, you like their posts, you do all of those things that are necessary. Or if you have that favorite crush, right? How are you going to know that the crush uh, knows who you are if you don't, you know, send a note, right? You know how it is back in the day. And you send the note to let them know, hey, I, you know, want to eat lunch with you or, hey, um, I, I want to like study together or whatever the case might be. You break it down step by step and you put in a little bit of work to get to know the person that you want to have a relationship with. And why is even all of that important? The, the, the truth of the matter is that, that God, if you're a Christian, God wants you to be like Christ. Yeah, I, I know it's a news flash for some people, but if you're a Christian, God wants you to be like Christ. But you can't be like somebody that you don't know. And so we have to put in the work to get to know who Jesus is. And as we learn more about who Jesus is, we get to know God better. And when we get to know God better, we can become more like Christ because that's what God wants for you anyway. And so, and so how do we play that out? How does that happen in our lives? Um, we have to get to know God better. And when we do, it changes how we read the Bible. It changes how we apply the Bible to our own personal lives. And so here's a couple of questions that I want you to ask yourself every time you read the Bible. A couple of questions that I want you to ask yourself. One, uh, you should, every time you read the Bible, you should ask yourself, what does this teach me about God? What is this verse? What is this story? What is this illustration teaching me about God? Because God is the person that I'm trying to get to know right? You have to learn them. You have to study them. You have to know exactly how God thinks and what God wants for you. The second question that you can ask every time you read the Bible is, what does this teach me about myself? How, how can I learn even more about myself every time I read this scripture, this verse, or this story? And then the third question that you can ask yourself is, what does this teach me about how I treat other people? What does this Bible verse teach me about how I treat other people? Because if you really want to be like or get to know Jesus, you have to understand that Jesus was for everybody. He was never really for himself. He was for everybody else. And so how can you get to know God better by asking these three questions every time you read God's word? Here's something that I want you to think about. Um, as we get ready to pray, because the truth of the matter is that you, you may not have all the answers to everything that's in the Bible. You may not have all the answers to some of your questions about God and some of your questions about the Bible. But, but here's the truth of the matter is that when we make it a goal to try to get to know God better, we understand that that's, that's a great place to start. That just taking a step-by-step -step process of trying to know God better is, that's the start. That's where that's where you want to start. And so here's a question that I want you to think about. What's one thing the Bible has taught me about God? Just start there. One thing that the Bible has taught you about God, because my prayer for you is that as you get to know God better, you become 
more like Jesus. And when you become more like Jesus, you become the person that God has always wanted you to be. Let's pray together. Um, God, thank you so very much for this reminder of how important it is for us not to read the Bible just so we can get through it, but not and, and not to read the Bible just so that uh, we can fill our heads with more information, but that we should read the Bible so that we can get to know you better. Help us to read the Bible so that we can learn more about you and learn more about ourselves so that we can become more like Jesus more like the greatest person who ever lived, more like the person who gave his life for others and changed the world literally. Help us, Lord, to apply your word to our lives and to see how important it is for each and every one of us every single day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.